Yeah, so I want to give a little bit of a rundown on how to analyze the soil on any property. Yeah, the ultimate test or testament to how much you understand or how much you pay attention to your soil are your plants. They will either do incredibly well or they won't do well. They might not like the soil, they might like the soil. So it's up to you as a gardener to understand the personality and the different soil types on your own property. If you can master that, you can grow anything. That's how powerful the soil is in the relationship to how well or how poorly your plants do in the garden. Yeah, I think one of the biggest elements that gardeners are always missing is understanding their own soil in their own yard. There's this um, lack of energy to research every part of your garden. Most gardens have uh, wet areas, they have sandy areas, they have clay areas, they have uh, perfect soils in certain areas. And if you really pay attention and go and study your garden, what's going on? You can pick the right plants. You can improve the soil to a, a position where you can grow almost anything. And your plants will reward you tenfold if you pay attention to the soil. Yeah, so I want to give a little bit of a rundown on how to analyze the soil on any property. And this exercise is very, very important because nobody's doing it and nobody really has an understanding of the soil that they have on their own personal property or on a job site or wherever it may be. So what I've done is I've tried my best to collect every single material that we have on the job on this building site. And I'm going to start to explain what they are. So this one here is from our river, it's chewed up sticks and leaves and uh, whatever you can imagine and it's got a bit of a grainy sand in it. This here is different, it's from the river, but what it is is, wow, we have no worms, there's a worm in here. What this is, is in the river, but it's starting to grow plants. So. You can see the improvement from this to that just by the fact that there's life and uh, plant material growing inside this material. This material is actually, I'm really happy we have this on our land because I'm using this to propagate plants. Um, the clay content, what it does is it's behind the house, this stuff, there's lots of it. I have to filter out all the rocks but I'm happy to have it because it retains a lot of moisture. It's a very usable material for, you know, creating uh, areas where you can start cuttings and seeding, seeds. This material, oddly enough, is maybe five feet away from this in the back. So look at the difference. It's high in organic matter. It's from the runoff from the, the mountain that's above us. This probably is original and this is the runoff, the uh, leaves that have decomposed, the sticks, whatever the material is, this has a lot of organic material. This one here happens when we have a uh, really rough river, uh, lots of river um, activity. This is a very fine sand and I get, again I'm incredibly happy to have this because I can use it for example in other soils to make it a lot more fluffy. This here, let me call this my original soil. So this is the soil I have on 90% of my land in the down, down below area. So the river has made this, um, let's say over the last 100,000 years or whatever it is. So this is what I'm mainly dealing with. And if you can identify what your main soil is, then you can condition it to improve the existing material that is uh, the majority of your land. This here is uh, from trench composting and uh, using the leaves from the river. It is where we want to end up. This is a really beautiful material. So by knowing the end goal, 
I'm way ahead of the game. I, want, I know that I want all these materials that are on this table to end up like this. So this is really important for me to know what I want to end up with in terms of getting to this great material. So I have uh, this here, I always call it green matter. So as you see here, the roots have done an amazing job of chewing up these leaves and uh, turning it into great soil. So this is probably my biggest energy source for my, uh, my soil. Um, I want to be soil self-sufficient, which is a dream, but uh, I'm working towards it and I'm going to pass on this information as I go along learning if it's possible to create that quality of soil with the materials you have on your own land. So I have two superstars, one of them being Alpha Alpha. It sends down these massive roots and pulls up the nitrogen and boy does it ever make the soil beautiful that's around it. It is such a workhorse. The next one are these strawberries. I just, I can't even believe how perfect they turn the soil into uh, when when the soil is around the roots they just do such a knock-up job of of getting that into great soil so do yourself a favor walk your entire property um, try to analyze what you have on your land how you can combine these different materials to end up with your perfect soil it's very important that you have the chance to um, analyze this setup how do you get from this type of material to something that you can really grow in? And uh, if your property provides all those um, parts, then use it to your advantage. So I'm going to show a couple of things here. So I'm just going to do some soil math with you. So if I took a handful of this, took a handful of this, took a handful of this, took the rocks out, let me put another little handful here, then I take another handful of this great working um, river growth, and if I mix these three together efficiently, you can see already, and I haven't filtered any of this, this is raw coming out of the ground. So if you see this, I can almost push that over to here and be content with that. Now if I have something growing inside here, this would turn into this very, very quickly. So remember, if you have the components, you can make any type of soil from the materials that you have in your own garden or your own... Um, acreage you can make whatever you want as long as you know what you have on your property we have all kinds of other materials like leaves and grass cuttings and all those things but those are more in the composting area you can always add them to this and what happens is if you you really pay attention to what you have you might be able to be soil self-sufficient in your own uh, garden and you don't need to bring in all kinds of uh, expensive materials.